say Kopalezozo today. It's Friday. I've got my father, my biological father, Bishop Espim Somi, the teacher, the prophet of Africa. I'm telling you, the man is loaded. My God, not because he's my father, but he's loaded. You can feel, you can hear when he speaks the articulation, the revelation, the illumination of the knowledge of God, the depth, the wide, and the heights of the things and the revelations of God. I'm telling you, you are going to be blessed tonight. These are the days of glory. We are loading. December is coming where we're going to have. Days of glory. I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you next week we're going to get how many days we are going to have, who, who the speakers that are going to preach. I'm telling you, you'll be transformed, you'll be changed, you'll be, um, I'm telling you, you'll be the manifestation of God Himself. <laughs> because He cuts his days of glory. We are emphasizing we'll get our breakthroughs we'll live in abundance and the glory is its wealth the glory is riches the glory is dominion the glory is kingship my God, Utumbuso and Kunukula, Sigo Nugu, the Nokuza, and Nokchabul, and Yabona Ganji, Uzo Kazagas, I don't want to explain anything. And he's going to speak to you. Minam Gushogu and Uguti, please like our page on Facebook, follow us, I'm telling you, and please share the page with your friends. That will be helpful. And I'm also on TikTok, please like and subscribe. Oh, uh, TikTok, we are like her. Best you are follower, then go to the Magunjalo. Go YouTube. You do the very same thing. You subscribe, you like, and you can share also. <laughs> and I know you're gonna be blessed. And la panagu WhatsApp oge eni tonga yenzo. La uma video ma tu mela. Share it. Nala wak TikTok. Wa share. Yabon ma wa share. Utinge. And you're going to be blessed, I'm telling you. Please follow us on social media. There are so many things that you're going to hear, you're going to have, and you're going to be blessed. And 2020 days of glory loading. Hashtag DOG dog days of glory 2020 is loading. Is loading. I'm going to tell you who are those speakers, and we are going to shake things. Things are going to be manifesting the glory of God. I'm telling you, this is Friday and you're going to be blessed. Next week, we are closing it with a bang. And I'm telling you, God is going to bless you. Your life will never be the same again. This is the time and the moment where you're going to be blessed. Tonight, be blessed. Share, subscribe, and do everything that the social media requires. You and me, we're going to meet next time next week or on Sunday. <laughs> We're going to be live, same channel. You're going to receive the glory of God. May God bless you. Until we meet next time, enjoy Bishop Espim Somi, my father. Bless you. Eh, uh, the kingdom of Kulunkolo, right now has no geographical boundaries. Okay. The kingdom of Kulunkolo, Ngege wa shuti igwa Israel. Ngege wa shuti se South Africa. Ngege wa sho uguti. Isenda wene tiz. Gotwa i kingdom nga mkulu mkulu. Ine definition eti. Aisigo ena loku. Gotwa i iloku. Ok. Ok. Angi tisa kala sathi so size ana kala. Misa zamu guza guwe na kanya. Na we wazak mina shanga ni samwe. Upal uti. For the kingdom of God is not meat and food. So first of all, the kingdom of God has nothing to do with food and eating and drinking. But the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, I always like to put this, this verse like this. The kingdom of God is not food and eating 
and drinking. But it is righteousness in the spirit and peace in the spirit and joy in the spirit. In other words, the kingdom of God is in the spirit. So translate yourself into the spirit so that you will understand the kingdom that is in the spirit. The kingdom of South Africa has a geographical boundary. The kingdom of United Kingdom has got geographical boundaries. But the kingdom of God has got spiritual boundaries. Not physical boundaries. So you need to understand you've got to be translated. Yes. 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 Amen. Okay. Amen. Okay. Let's try and explain this translation thing. Now when Jesus comes back the Bible says we shall not precede those that are dead but they shall rise first but we who are still alive shall be translated now in other words, this means when Jesus comes you can never enjoy Jesus if you are in the flesh. For you to understand Jesus you've got to be translated get into his kingdom and his kingdom is in the spirit. That's the only time you can Enjoy the spiritual benefits. I'm a benefiting Agamoya. Are you with me? Ninam. Okay. Let me just reiterate this thing. The kingdom of God is not food and drink. But the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and, peace and joy. All this in the spirit. It's not righteousness in the flesh. For righteousness can never be in the flesh. For the flesh wars against the spirit. And the spirit wars against the flesh. So you can never be in righteousness. And at the same time be in the flesh. Are you with me? Are we working together? So all I ask you to do is for you to be translated. Let's give a second translation. Now, one day, John the Apostle was seeing this vision. He was in the spirit on the Lord's day. But there is an angel that came to him and asked him a question. Do you want to see the Lamb's wife? The bride of Christ. Do you want to see that? Now let me ask you. Do you want to see that? Do you want to see, the, the, you want to see the, the bride of Christ? Then the Bible says immediately he was translated. He was in the spirit because you can never see the bride of Christ in the flesh. The bride of Christ is always in the spirit. If you want to know the bride get yourself translated. 
Amen. Amen. So it's going to take some time. Okay, let me just go on with this translation. Again, the Bible says, if you want to be my disciple, you must deny yourself. Yeah? Amen. Do you want to be a disciple? You must deny yourself. Okay, let's make it easy. What's the meaning of deny? Let, let, let's, let's not use the word to gutela. Let's use the word deny. Pika. Deny yourself. What's your name? She is Tandazi. Oh, Tandazi. How can she deny herself? Are you Tandazi? Oh, Tandazi. She's not denying herself. What is your name? Okay, I, I want her to deny herself. Are you Lind? Oh, Ning. She's just denied herself. Did you get the idea? She just denied herself. Now, if you want to be a disciple, you must realize everything that you are. My name is Bishop Bishop Msomi. I hold the highest post in the assemblies in Christ. I am the chairperson of the Inc. A minister's fellowship. This is who I am. I've started churches down from Pochapstin to, to Greater House. This is who I am. Nobody can tell me anything about that. This is what I have achieved. But immediately Jesus comes. I realize the King of Heaven is here. When I stop denying myself. I come down yes. from being a bishop. I come down yes. from being a pioneer of so many churches. I come down yes. from being the chairperson of all the pastors and the Wenyaga Inc. I come down. Yes. From being the expounder of the word of God. I deny who I am. I refuse to be, to be recognized. All I want you to do. Is to recognize Jesus in me. I refuse for you to, re to recognize me. I am nothing. Angiluto. Absolutely nothing. Angiluto. For I do not live anymore. But it is Christ who lives in me. Christ and the life that I live. I live through Christ. So never say. Somi is the expound of the word. For I do not. The one who expounds the word is the Holy Spirit. I am nothing. I deny myself. Who do you think I am? Have you ever heard people who speak English? They say we are you are too big for your boot. That's, that's too difficult to, to translate, right? Amen. <laughs> when people say you are too big for your boots, you're too proud. You can never see the kingdom as long as you are proud. The Bible says God hates the haughty. He will bring them down. But he says to you, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will raise you up at the right time. The best thing to do the best thing to do is to humble yourself. 
Hey, already I'm in the kingdom. Okay. Amen. All right. Okay. I deny myself. All right. Second, let's go to that second word. Denying myself. Ugusitela is as good as committing suicide. To deny kufana no guibulala. Kill yourself. Uguibulala. If you want to be in the kingdom, Mofano Basem Buswain. Kill yourself. Zibulale. That's denying yourself. Ugui. I have the right to life. Yes, I have the right to life. But for Christ to live in me, I must kill myself. If you cannot kill yourself, you can never be in the kingdom. For all who are in the kingdom have crucified the flesh and all its passions. Amen. Okay. Let's go. Come on, speak now. As kobe as as kalen manch. Right. Babu mso magasa boni ge. Right. Nshiye umuntu a mesha mekai. Right. I guess vule. Let's open Matthew chapter six. As vule nu Matthew is at Luke six. Or maybe we should not open there. Nu masinga vule lapo. Let's just pray. Do you know our Father who is in heaven? Let's stand. Let's stand. I guess this is Baba Wetu says to you. You know what Baba Wetu says to Amen. You can sit down. Clap hands for yourself. I thought you will not remember our father. Okay. Now, I'm going to introduce the kingdom. And even tomorrow, I'm going to introduce the kingdom. Gizo Veza Umbuso. So introduce. Now, are you all dead now? Send feel and onke manch. All dead. Okay, I'm dead also, right? Naming feel. So whatever I say, you can't blame me. Because I'm, de I'm dead. Go bang feel. Whatever I say, can never hurt you. Ngege go party God. For you are dead. Go bu feel. Dead people don't hurt. Okay. <laughs> so right, let's go. As When you read in the book of Luke, the disciples ask Jesus, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. And then Jesus says, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, Baba wetu osezuluin. Hallowed be your name. Malipaga nyiswi kamalako. Let thy kingdom come. Umbuso wako maufige. Let thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Ndanda yako enzi we mklabe njongo ba enzi we zuluin. Give us this day our daily bread. Usipe na mklaisi nkwa setu semi thange mi. Forgive us our sins. Usetele la magdala etu. For we forgive those that trespass against us. Ngo basi batetele lile abasonile. Lead us not into temptation. Ngas ngeni segulingwe. But deliver us from the evil one. Uskulu lego mu. For thine is thy kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's get this thing right. As it all Teach us to pray. Then Jesus says, "This is my chance." To show them the 
the, the, the prayer points of heaven. This is the way I'm going to tell them what is important. What is top priority? What is the last priority? He says, first of all, if you pray, say, our Father, what in heaven? Hallowed be your name. That's the first point. The point is about the Father. You must always start with God. In your prayer life, your point number one is the name of God, of the Father. Not about you. Don't be a selfish Christian. Be a Christian that worries about the name of the Lord. Somewhere God told us. My name is blasphemed amongst the nations. Because you Christians worship me with your heart far away from me. In other words, everything that we do, we do it for the glory of the Lord. Before we ask for the food in the fridge, before we ask for our cars, think about the name of the Father. Before you ask, for a new suit. Think about the name of the Father. That is priority number one. Let me tell you something else. If you go down to Exodus chapter 12. The first commandment. Thou shalt have no other God. The first commandment. Is about the Father. The Father alone. You cannot have another God. If you have another God. You are not yet in the kingdom. You are not yet in the kingdom. If you have another call. Amen. We, we, we are just getting into the kingdom. Listen, listen to what Jesus says. He says there are two, two roads. Eh? One is very large. Very wide. Lots of people walk in, in this way. And there is another one. Very thin. You cannot carry any other luggage. Let alone any other luggage. Any package you cannot carry. You leave everything out. Oh, no, pants. For, for the gate. Can I touch this? For the gate is too narrow. It can only take me. Not my stuff. I must leave my stuff. Because it is too narrow. Leave everything outside. Can, can, can I move a little further? Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness for the kingdom is righteousness then all these things shall be added let's do this 
Ah, you'll forgive me, I know. For the Bible says, forgive those that <laughs> so you're, you're going to forgive me. You are outside the kingdom. You are joining outside the kingdom. Joining with everything you have. But the Bible says when you come to me. Deny yourself. Drop everything you have. Drop every staff. Then say Lord I'm coming as I am. I want to enter into the kingdom. And then the Bible says, if you come with nothing, return the things of the devil to the devil. Come on by yourself. Immediately you enter. All those things shall be added to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? You cannot enter into the kingdom for the things of the devil. Don't worry about the things that the devil gave you. For you are going to get new things. Amen. For if a man is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold. Amen. Behold. Something new has come out. Can I remember David? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You understand? And sometimes, should I throw this away? Oh, no, 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 no. no. I can't. I'm going to keep this one. No, 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 no. I can't lose all this. But the fact is, the devil, the devil gave it to you. You cannot enter into the kingdom with the devil's stuff. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. I feel like singing, man. Do you know Ron Kenon? Hallowed be your name. I right? The first thing, brother, is about hallowing the name of God. Eh? Amen. You understand? Right. He says, Uti. for his name must be hallowed. He says, Uti. thou shalt have no image. Never have an image. For images defile his name. He hates images. If you are to hallow his name, leave all the images. For the images are made of dust. For, for images are made of wood. But if you want to get into the kingdom, you must be translated from dust and wood. No, no, Kuni. Get into the spirit. Uh -huh. How can you, in the spirit, worship idols? To miss it home. No, I'm asking you, brothers and sisters. Let's say this is my God. This thing is not spirit. No, this, 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 this is not spirit. You can, you can touch this thing. If I'm translated, you can touch me. This thing is lower. Let's move up. Are you moving up? You're moving up. Thank you. 
Let's continue with that. As Quebec. Do you want to see the 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 the, the bride of Christ? We are for no bona umakoti. Then Christ says suddenly, huh? I love the word suddenly. It must happen quickly. Suddenly. Twinkling of the eye. We shall be translated. Suddenly. God is going to do a great work. He doesn't take a whole year to translate you. He translates you now. He says he took me right up. Uti wang tata. Right to the high mountain. You can never see the you never you can never see the things of God. If you don't go up, anyone who comes to the kingdom of God, the kingdom is always on the mountain. Let's start. Eh? When Elijah wanted to, to, to destroy. The, the prophets of Baal. He took them up of the mountain. When God wanted to give ten commandments, He took Moses up of the mountain. When God asked Abraham to offer his son, He asked him to Abraham. go offer into the mountain. When, when, when Jesus died, He was taken up the mountain. For you to be able to see the church of God, to see the kingdom of God, you must go up the mountain. Never be at the bottom. So he was taken up the mountain. And when he got up the mountain, he saw a city. Let's, let's stop there, right? Because we're not talking about the new Jerusalem. We're talking about the kingdom. Now the priority of God for you to be in the kingdom. When you start praising, start with him. Amen. Start with him. Number two. Thy kingdom come. So far, you don't feature. Amen. You don't feature at all. It's the name. Now number two is the kingdom. No, 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 no. You, you haven't featured as well. I, I know you're dead. You're not hurting. Yeah. <laughs> Even point number two. You don't feature. Point number two is about the kingdom of God. Father, Baba, let your kingdom come. Not yet my kingdom. I need your kingdom to come. Oh, before I go on with the kingdom. When John the Baptist came, he says, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Why should I repent? For the kingdom is at hand. Let me tell you something. You can never enter the kingdom unless you repent. You know what is repentance? Repentance is about changing your mindset. It's, a, it's about today deciding to say my God you are number one your kingdom is number two that's repentance I know you don't join anymore you don't have a girlfriend anymore you have no boyfriend anymore but I want you to repent and make God number one and make his kingdom number two still at number two you still don't feature that is why he says deny yourself De deny yourself are you still there 
Are you still there? <laughs> Some people are still there. Even when they walk, they are there. Let me tell you about somebody who was there. He was alive. His name was Ananias. His wife was Sapphira. They took a, they, 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 they took a clue from, from a dead uh, uh, what's his name? The son of the the son of uh, of comfort. What's his name? What's his name? Ananias, yes, Ananias. Ananias. He bought he, he took his farm. What has he farm like? He sold it. Well, he brought only the money of the farm. Well, farm. And put the money at the feet of the apostle. Well, apostle. To do that, you should die. You can't do that if you are alive. Amen. Amen. You must learn to deny yourself. You know what the, 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 the First Testament church did? They took everything they had. They were left with nothing. They gave it to the, they put it in the feet of the apostles. I call that dying. You understand? And then this other guy was still alive. Don't copy from dead people. If you are still alive. For you are going to die. Physically this time. Ananias went and sold his land. He took, 50, he took 50 percent. He took 50 percent. He left another 50 percent. Why did he leave the other 50 percent? He left it for himself. For he was still alive. Ananias was dead. So he left nothing for himself. Yeah. You know why Ananias left the 50 percent? Because he was still alive. Still needed that man. Why say thing, He says no. What it can? I'm not going to give them hundred percent. But I want the same accolade. For fifty percent. fifty percent. I want the same glory. This other guy gave hundred percent. I expect to get the same glory with that guy. You must be real alive. But that glory is for people who are dead. Not for living people. He brings the 50%. Then the Holy Spirit tells. Hey Peter. Petro. Ask this guy. Mbuse. Ask him. Mbuse. Is it the money that you sold the land for? This guy is well alive and intelligent. He's, He's coming. coming. He says it's all. What you know, young? This is all. What you know, young? Hey, Apostle, this is all. Yeah, one mm, I did like the other guy yeah, yesterday. I need the so. same accolade. And then the Holy Spirit says, This guy is out of the kingdom. Just ask him one question. Before you sold the land, did it not belong to you? He says, Yes. Yeah, when you have sold it, the money didn't belong to you. He says, yes. What's here? Then God says, why did you allow the devil? You see, the devil cannot tempt dead people. The devil only tempt living people. Do, do you understand what yeah, I'm trying to say about being dead and, and, and alive? And then he says, you have not lied to men. Because when you say something wrong to the apostles, you are not lying to him. But you are lying to the Holy Spirit. Do you understand that? When, when, when people are in the kingdom, when they talk to each other, they don't speak 
carnal to carnal. Abakulume enyameni enyameni. They speak spirit to spirit. Abakulume moya gumoya. Okay, let's open it up, right? Asi vule. The Bible says. I know a man in Christ. Because he's a new creature. And then he says. For we know not anybody according to the flesh. But we know them according to the spirit. Okay. Amen. Now. That is, that is why we say we need to be translated. Now. The Bible tells us. Point number two is the kingdom of God. Change your priorities. Priority number one is the name of the Father. Priority number two is the kingdom. When we come to the name, for he has given him a, a name above Mas all other names. And thirdly, point number three, when you pray, when you live in, on this earth, is thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Now, that's why the Bible says if your righteousness does not exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter the kingdom. How do you enter the kingdom? How do you enter into the kingdom? You are saved. Uh, John chapter 3, I think. When he speaks to Nicodemus. Some people can preach. But they preach outside the kingdom. Some, preach, some people can preach. Because they know how to preach. We've got Bible schools nowadays. We started at the, the, the Bible schools. I can expound the word of the Lord. That was the kind of preacher Nicodemus was. But one day. Nicodemus realized. I'm not what I should be. I am not what I should be. You know the worst part is. Is trying to heal a, a, a lunatic. Because a lunatic. When you say you have gone loony. Mauti usu luni so sangen says you are luni. It's a way when us when us Oshanya because he's crazy. Go what we are saying. Everything else is crazy. Yonki in dog, he is the only normal guy. We are not yet on your people. All of you are crazy. No, Kenya San. If you give him tablets or pills and ask him to drink it, he looks at the crazy man. He takes the pills. He puts them under the, the tongue. And then he takes the water. He drives the water over the tongue. He drinks the water. But the pills and the tablets are underneath it. And when you face Kolim. that side, he says, this crazy man thinks I am crazy. He takes the tablets and puts them in the bed. The best thing about Nicodemus is that he realized he's not perfect. He's not what he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be better than what he is. Then he comes late in the night. He comes to Jesus. He, he denies himself. He says, 
Wati. I know. Giazi. No man can do what you do. If you, if you don't walk with God, if God is not with you, he, what he was trying to say, I can't do what you do because I don't have God. I can't preach the way you preach. I can't preach with authority because I don't have God. But you can preach with authority. You can heal the sick. You can raise the dead. Because God is with you. He was literally saying, What can I do? What can I do? And then the Bible tells us, and then Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if you are not born again, you will not see the kingdom. In other words, this is what Jesus is saying. You must be born again to see the kingdom. This is about seeing the kingdom. Not about entering. There are two steps. You must first see the kingdom. Sometimes it's difficult to to, to, to to eagerly desire something until you see it. Let's, let's, let's make an example. Let your light so shine before men so that they will see your good deeds. Then they will, they will worship the Father. What Jesus is saying here, he says, he says, Men will never eagerly desire God. If you don't display what God looks like, people must see God in you. Then they will start eagerly desiring God. But if your light does not shine, to believe and not to believe is the same. Do you understand? Moses was a great motivator. Moses why motivate him cool. After God took him up the mountain. Before he came up to this mountain is called Is it is what mountain is that? I forgot this mountain. The last mountain he was on. God said Moses you are not going to enter. But do me a favor. Let's go up to the mountain. You see, you will always see things in the mountain. Eh? Let's go to the mountain. As long as you are down there, there are certain things you are not going to see. Try. Take a step up. Sometimes it's, a, it's, it's by fasting. Sometimes it's by praying. Sometimes it's by giving. But you must take the upper step. And then again, take another one. For there are certain things you can't see until you are on top of the mountain. Take another one and take the final one. And then God says, Moses, we are not going to enter there. But see, it. he saw the land. And then when he came down, or before, before he came down, he says to God, Lord, set a man before these people. You heard that? Set a man. Before these people, who can take these people to that land? Because I've seen the land. They have not seen the land. You know what they did because they didn't see the land in the beginning? Moses sent 12 spies. They went to the land of, of, of Canaan. They saw giants there. They came back. 
and demotivated the, the nation. The nation was demotivated because they had not seen the land. Sometimes you've got to see the kingdom to long for the kingdom. You must see the to long for the king. So Jesus says, you must be born again. Being born again will open your eyes. Hey, there is the kingdom. Hey, in the kingdom there is righteousness. Hey, in the kingdom there is peace. Hey, in the kingdom there is joy. And all this in the spirit. I'm tired of being a carnal Christian. And then... God gave them, they, they gave them uh, uh, Joshua. And then secondly, the men ask, in, in, in the can I go back to my mother's womb and be born again? Oh, what a carnal Christian. You know, I've, I've just listened to T.D. Jakes teaching about carnal Christians. He says a carnal Christian is not a, a Christian that lives in sin. No, 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 that's not that. He says a carnal Christian is a, is a Christian that does everything in his, in his flesh. Can I make an example? Right. Giving is something that is godly. You are doing something very great. But sometimes when we give, we blow the trumpet. No, no, no. Do you understand what I'm saying? Where is my bottle? Can I use your bottle? Maybe bottle alarm. Brother, I know you need water. Don't drink the water, right? Take the water. Water at this is a godly act. In the end, this is a godly act. But when does it become carnal? When I start moving from you, I gave him the water. I come to you. You see, he's drinking the water. I gave him the water. You see, he's drinking the water. I gave him the water. That starts beginning to be a carnal action. It's a godly act. Praying is a goodly thing. It's a godly thing. But when I pray for you to clap hands, when I start praying and, and quoting verses to Jesus as if he doesn't know the Bible, and when you all finish praying, and I continue one way so that everybody will start opening their eyes and they want to know who is this prayer that's a carnal prayer that's a carnal prayer you know a carnal Christian is not necessarily a, a, a Christian who lives in sin a carnal Christian is a grandstanding Christian. That's a carnal Christian. He is not trolling. If I haven't come, if I haven't arrived, that's me. a carnal Christian. I can see the kingdom. Wherever I preach, I preach the kingdom. Because the kingdom kills me. Because I must speak about the king and his domain. 
Finally, Jesus says, Okay, you don't have to go into your mother's womb again. You must be born of water and of the spirit. Then you will enter. Firstly, you saw it. Okay, let's explain this one. Okay, let me just explain what uh, well-educated people say about Again, being born of water. You see, when the baby is in your stomach, eh? No, the baby. The, the baby is floating in the water. Eh? Is, it, is it true? No, no, Apostle, you don't know. Is it true? Amen. <laughs> the baby floats on the water. When you are about to give birth, water comes out. Eh? Then they say being born of water is the natural birth. Let me put this on record. I don't believe that. That's, that's, that's not being born of the spirit. Being born of the water is for me after you have received Christ, take you and put you in the water. Do you understand? Put you in the water. When you are in the water, this is what you are saying. I am bearing the old self. When you come out of the water, you have been resurrected. You are going to live the newness of life. So you have been born of the water. In short, I'm saying, are you baptized? If you are not, have not been baptized, read Romans chapter 6. It will explain it to you. Romans chapter 6. And then secondly, you must be born of the Spirit. Being born of the Spirit is an experience that is wonderful. Yes. You know, once you are born of the water, let's make an example. It's easy. Let's work with, with examples. Paul goes to Ephesus. He comes, there is a church. The church is worshipping. The church is clapping hands. The, the church is preaching. He comes and looks at them. Oh no. There's something wrong here. Hey guys. Since you believe. Have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Have you been baptized? Have you been baptized in the spirit? They say no. We have never heard of that. But we are already Christians. Hey, can you be a Christian without receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit? That's possible. And then Paul says, come here. You must be born of the spirit. Then he lays hands upon them. Then they start speaking in tongues. Then they start prophesying. They've got the second breath. Then they, are, then they enter into the kingdom. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom. So in other words, if you are not born of the Spirit, you can never put God first. You can never put his kingdom second. You can never put his will number three. And then you'll only be number four. But if you are a carnal Christian, you will start complaining. How, can, how come she wears platform shoes? I am wearing, what do you call these shoes? I am wearing, what do you call these shoes? These shoes. Sandals. How come? 
You complaining about what you are wearing. We are calling You not complaining about what is in your house. So what is important? Is what is in your house. Not the mouth speaking. The abundance of the heart.